Welcome back to Morgan's video blog, Morgan's online blog in video format. Today, I'm here to talk to you about Morgan's Imaginarium 2021. This past weekend, I attended Imaginarium 2021. It's a small convention aimed at writers of all stripes. I met many writers, filmmakers, attended panels, shared some of my own writing advice, and played dress up. I first learned about Imaginarium last year through the award-winning Cassandra Morgan, who's been my Facebook friend since I joined the Insecure Writer Support Group on Facebook. Uh, my virtual experience last year went well, as I may have mentioned, and I was excited about the prospect of attending a convention live again and actually meeting people in person. So when I got an email saying they still had panelist slots open, I didn't hesitate to sign up. So let's talk about my road trip out. After I signed up, I promptly Google mapped the trip and found it was an eight and a half hour drive without stops or traffic. My immediate response was to shout out on Facebook and see if any of my fellow Northern Virginia writers wanted in. By the next day, Sako Toomey, or Cass Voigt, was in. Now, I've known Sako for years, even before she joined the local writing community, and you might recognize her as a regular from my lazy Sunday afternoon live streams where we chat about writing and usually even fit in a few productivity sprints on my YouTube. Um, so I was excited, yay, someone friendly to keep me company on the road, take a couple driving shifts and a familiar face in a crowd of strangers. Always good and handy, you know? The road trip started off with me completely sleep deprived. Because of limited hardware at my day job, I'd had two 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. testing shifts on Wednesday and Thursday. I'd thought about napping before heading out, but was too wired. Sako showed up right on time and we hit the road by 1.30 p.m. on Thursday. We made excellent time getting out of Northern Virginia long before rush hour hit. At least Thursday's rush hour. If it had been Friday, let's not think about it. My little red four-cylinder 2012 Chevy Sonic struggled with some of the mountains, but she made it through West Virginia. And after the worst of the mountains, I turned to Sako and declared that my little car deserved a name for both getting us through the mountains and because she was over 100,000 miles at that point. Just then, we passed a literal sign for Bell, West Virginia, as I'd already packed a Bell Beauty and the Beast gown for a costume contest. There was no question. My little red car now has a name. So <laughs> we stopped for dinner just before Charleston, West Virginia. Going off highway signs, we found our way through basically a ghost town to a Wendy's, a very slow Wendy's. A Wendy's where the previous shift had walked out and the current staff was struggling to catch up while short staffed because yet another person had walked out of the next shift. After far longer than any fast food stop should take, we made it back to the highway. <laughs> After the mountains, as the sun was setting, Interstate 64 crossed us over into Kentucky. Later Googling got us pictures and a name, but all we saw as we crossed into Kentucky was the glistening of a steampunk city, like straight out of a book or a painting, otherwise apparently known as the Catlisletsburg Refinery. Anyway, Google it. As we enter the home stretch, or destination stretch really, the skies opened up and the gods themselves went to war with each other. Lightning crossed the sky, drivers turned on their blinkers and slowed way down, and I had a moment of thanks that the weather had waited for this flat, clear stretch with wide lanes and decent lighting even at night, 
Otherwise, I would have wanted to pull over and wait out the storm. And there were many places, especially in West Virginia, where that wasn't even an option. Just around 1130, we arrived at the hotel, thankfully on the near side of Louisville, Kentucky. We were checked in and unloaded by midnight. One more note on the road trip portion of this post. The next morning, I ended up having to call the front desk for tech support for the shower. Apparently, as some of you might know, but I didn't, some bath shower combos switch to shower mode by basically pulling the ring where the water comes out, where the aerator should go, and you just pull it down. I was looking for a toggle. Um, I pulled up on the spigot and flipped the dial every which way. I called in Sako for a very sleepy morning sanity check. Luckily, the front desk was probably used to these calls. But honestly, I never expected to need tech support for a shower. So let's talk about the convention itself. The convention was nicely laid out. Panel rooms surrounded the atrium and lobby space with a creator space in the atrium and vendors filling the hall. Indie writers, small presses, and short film creators were all well represented throughout the entire convention. Um, the convention attendees were primarily the same as the vendors and panelists, so we all got to talk writing with people who knew what they were talking about. But it did lead to low attendance at some of the panel sessions. I'm sure part of that was because of the hybrid um, uh, realities of the world. If you've been following me for a while, you know I like to approach a writing convention as if it were my chance to so-called recertify as a writer, earning my credentials by hitting every panel I can. Well, there were only panels from like 9 or 10 a.m. until 5 p.m., so there was only so much time to fit them in. For panels, I did manage to attend Taming the Squirrel, a love story, writing anthology, a writer's two worlds, and writing slash illustrating comics. For workshops, I hit how to marathon write like a creative boss and learned that marathon writing is not for me, and Meisner, write, Meisner for writing. And I caught the end of the writing with voice workshop. Plus, of course, there were the panels I was on and the opening ceremonies and um, the costume contest and the dealer's room and 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 <laughs> Saturday night was the awards ceremony with a dinner beforehand featuring a lovely belly dancer and a stand-up comedian unfortunately I arrived after seating right when the food was supposed to be served which meant I ended up in the back and couldn't really hear much of the comedy although I did meet him later and he was a pretty awesome guy as we got close to eight, I slipped out a little early to get into my costume for the masquerade, <clears throat> masquerade contest. With the convention being split between online and in-person segments, the online, the contest itself was quite small. There was one couple as, I think, Death and his lady, Sako as Lady Death, and me wearing a favorite of mine. What true con lover can resist a pretty dress that involves two puns for the price of one? I waltzed onto the dance floor as Beauty and the Mark of the Beast, otherwise known as Hell's Bell with 666 on my forehead. And then I celebrated my win with the DJ blasting Hell's Bells. Aw yeah. Sako raked it in with second place. My evenings were spent chatting with friends and making new friends, and the DJ kept the music hopping till midnight on Saturday. Did I take pictures of most of these things? No, I, I was having too much fun, but there are some pictures, so check out the blog post and my Instagram. So let's talk about my panels. I met some great people on Friday at the social media platforms panel with moderator John Pica, Dee Dee Cox, R.A. Muth, Rosemary Machira, Machario, Les Murphy, 
Um, and I think a Tommy B. Smith was the one who's not on social media who showed up to find out. I even took a few notes of my own there. My other two panels were online, so I packed my lighting umbrella, a curtain with a pair of fridge clips in case of emergencies, my webcam, and a selfie stick that I didn't use, just in case. At 11.15 on Saturday was a character creation moderated by Katherine Sullivan with C.L. Polk, Kelly Dougherty, L.R. Braden, Dan R. Arman, and Jonathan Zarantanello. And then on Sunday at 11.15 again was Zoom Etiquette moderated by Sally, Sally Ann Monty and with Katherine Sullivan. Again, uh, Katherine Sullivan was actually one of the people I trained on using Zoom for Conzealan last year. So that was a great way to establish my credentials. Now, short note about my outfits. I like to dress up. It is known. I spent a Friday in a purple sleeveless ruched top with white buttons for a kind of steampunk vibe and a watercolored flowing ankle length skirt. Saturday was my green plaid 1950s style dress complete with new crinoline <laughs> until I traded it out for the uh, bell ball gown. And Saturday with a long drive ahead of me was a gray and black color block pencil skirt and basically sweatshirt material, and a black t-shirt telling people to ask about my book. And I wore masks to compliment them all. I was one of the few who were masked up. Most follow the state guidelines of not needing to mask if they were vaxxed, but I wanted to avoid any regional bugs and the COVID Delta news was kind of making me nervous. So what's next? The trip home. With a near 10 hour trip home, we packed up as soon as my 1115 panel was done. But of course we wanted one last trip around the con to say goodbye to all the new people we'd met and network, hand out some business cards, you know how it goes. And I was given a new joke, courtesy of a new friend's kid. When someone hands you their business card, what you do is you ask, do you wanna see your card trick? When they say yes, or you go ahead anyway, hold out their business card and say, is this your card? It was hilarious, it, at least to me. I'm still laughing. Anyway. <laughs> oh, so after all that, we were almost out the door when I remembered that I didn't remember packing my comfy sandals, a quick stop at hotel registration and a sweep through the room I had us back to the car, sandals in tow. It was coming up on 1 p.m., so we hit Arby's and found out just how much non-hotel food had been within walking distance the entire time. Then, highway! Yay! Um, while we were on the road, I dialed into a Discon 3 slash Worldcon planning meeting and then dropped that for our special road trip live live streaming as I drove through the mountains of West Virginia. Uh, my occasional guest, Doc Coleman, had been asked and agreed to be our home base, making sure someone stayed on the stream so, when, so it wouldn't drop, no matter how bad our reception was. And... It worked. We had a little fuzziness here and there, and I'm thinking microphones next time because my Bluetooth car audio wasn't the best, but we barely had a blip, except when I tried to leave the browser window and it made me reload StreamYard every time I came back into the browser. But successful live stream from the road for like two hours. <sighs> After that, we were almost through the mountains when we stopped for dinner, a much wider selection this time, and wary of how long Wendy's had taken us, we hit a Chinese food buffet and was fed and on our way in probably 20 minutes, and we ended up not actually regretting it too much. Making great time, I was home by 11 p.m. and sent Sako on her way. Sako was awake enough not to use my guest room. Then, then... I went to sleep. Overall, I would hit Imaginarium again, and I would have Sako for a road trip companion. 
Thanks to Steven Zimmer, Holly Philippe, and the rest of the amazing staff for making Imaginarium 2021 a hybrid convention success. How was your weekend? I'll be back again next week with more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.